On the 135th day of Christmas, Evan gave to me Great Divides Yeti. Hey, welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. This is me, Matthew, and I will be drinking and enjoying Great Divides Yeti Imperial Stout, a gift from the um, from the uh, a gift from uh, oh yes, a gift from the gentleman and the scholar, Evan. Here's to you, Evan. Here's to you, Evan. <laughs> so, uh, Great Divides Yeti. I have seen this on store shelves quite a bit. I don't believe I've had it before. It is an imperial stout. It's a whole line of imperial stouts. There's variants. There's uh, oak aged barrel. There's caramel. There's uh, there's a lot. It seems like every time I see a Yeti on the store shelf, there's some new variant. So they've they've uh, really done a theme and variations on the on the beer. It is apparently an award-winning beer that has been around for several years um, and has won silvers and golds at the Great American Beer Festival and other, I assume, other more regional competitions. Um, Great Divide is out of Colorado, I do believe. I mean, being named Great Divide, I would be surprised if it wasn't. But now that I say that out of my mouth, I wonder. And I'm going to continue wondering because it doesn't oh yeah Denver Colorado it does it does say so uh, brewed out of Colorado hence Great Divide you know Colorado being on the Great Divide and all that jazz so I've seen it a lot it is award-winning and it's an imperial stout at nine foot nine nine point five percent ABV so uh, a bit more of a kicker than the uh... anyways another wonderful day outside here it's not quite winter We've got another week before winter actually hits officially but uh it's supposed to be winter, and we're getting clear skies again today, which is nice, very nice. Today around the property, I was uh, actually finding a uh, pine tree or spruce tree, I don't know how to tell the difference, um, uh, saplings, and re uh, moving them around, moving them out from under their mother trees and planting them elsewhere where hopefully they will get enough sun and open sky to grow themselves. It's my... Uh, Christmas tree investment for five years from now. Hmm. So diving into the smell, it smells boozy. Earthy. Um, there's not a there's not a really prominent sweetness. There's maybe some dark chocolate or um, maybe almost like a frappuccino, like uh, coffee mixed with chocolate and sugar, and maybe some cream to it. It is quite dark. It's thick. You cannot see through it. Um, the head is dark caramel and quite pretty, quite fetching. Yeah, there's a... The head is... Um, like, it's not super rich. There's, there's an earthiness, and I'm pretty sure I recognize that from, from hops. Um, and then just this really kind of subtle, um, uh, dark, sweet, not roasty. Yeah. Um, yeah, interesting. It, it, and it, this can has been sitting out for about 20 minutes. So I wanted to make sure it came up to temp a little bit more so I'd get a chance to enjoy the, uh, the, the flavor probably in a temperature more conducive to it. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't smell unpleasant. It just doesn't smell like, you know, maybe the, the molasses or the the syrup or the, the dark chocolate that you're expecting with an Imperial Stout. So let's see how it tastes. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, oh, the, okay. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it is, it is an earthy, think, 90% dark chocolate, um, with maybe, maybe the 
barest hint of sweetness in there. Um, and yeah, it's boozy. That's very interesting. Uh, typically with an Imperial Stout, I'm expecting the roastiness, dark flavors, but also a, a very definite sweetness. But this is not that at all. This is a dry, earthy, dark, chocolatey uh, beer. And yeah, I can, I can see how it would be award winning if only because it bucked the trend and ran away from the pack. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. There's almost a little bit of a, a vegetable going on in the earthiness. That's kind of interesting. Like, the thing that comes to mind is celery, but I'm not sure. Um, I'm guessing it's the kind of uh, some, some of the plant uh, vegetal quality of the hops that were used. Um, and it, it just blends in pretty nicely. It's just kind of another layer, another nuance to the beer. Yeah, this is a this is a beer best uh, um, savored, not because it's so sweet that it's cloying or or you know that it overworks your your taste buds, but because um, it's kind of rich. I'm hesitant. I'm hesitant to say decadent because. Decadent seems to me to imply a level of sweetness, but if you're thinking um, like uh, a, an Italian tiramisu where they cut the sugar by like a quarter, so you still have that creaminess of, of the, the, the whipped cream and, and a little bit of sweetness from, from the cake, from the lady fingers, but then they dusted it over with that espresso powder and the, the powdered sugar or powdered cho uh, chocolate kind of thing, the baker's chocolate, and that, that top you know, where it's a hint of whipped cream and it's covered with espresso powder and and like baker's chocolate, like um like Hershey's powder, powdered Hershey's, cocoa cocoa powder, that thing. It's it's like that. It's it's dark and and yeah, it's it's decadent in its way, but it's not sweet. It's different and uh and good. <laughs> Very good. I think this is a, a grown-up's beer. I mean, beer is a grown-up's drink, but if you're expecting sweeter things, this is not going to be it. But if you like your chocolate dark and your coffee black, this will be right up your alley. Like, right up your alley. Good thing I like both those things, right? Anyways. This is me definitely enjoying, for the first time, Great Divide's Yeti Imperial Stout. And uh, I will catch y'all on the flip side.